mwili na moyo wangu pia weza zimia bali mungu ndiye nguvu za uhai wangu yeye sehe There is none, our Father and our God. This morning we come before you in reverence and fear, my Father and my God, to honor your name, Jehovah Lord, to give you thanks for the way you've walked with us throughout the month of April. Lord, we stand amazed in your presence to give you all the glory and honor, Lord. And this morning, Father, would you receive all the praise. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. Would you meet us at our point of need, Jehovah Lord? As we begin this service, Father, would you grace us, O oh Lord? Would you walk with us, Jehovah Lord? We thank you, our Father. We worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Indeed, it is a new month and we want to just thank the Lord for what he has done and what he's yet to do. As we just desire to walk just a closer, walk with him each and every day. Amen? Join us, those who are online, that we worship together as we serve the Lord together this morning. Hallelujah. Buana sifiwe sana. Amen. Yeah, it's yet another morning that uh, the Lord has given us, uh, us life, that uh, we worship him, and exalt his holy name. Uh, we thank God that uh, every one of you has managed to come in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's time to start to worship and praise. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Amen. I want us now to take our spaces because we're going to dance and sing for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just forget about all your problems and anything that is maybe you feel that is disturbing you. I want to, you to take your free space because now you're about to sing for the Lord. Amen. Amen. You want to sing about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go. Again, 
nyabui Orungu nyabui Orungu nyabui Nyabui Him of glory, thank you this great morning, oh God. We worship and exalt your holy name. Oh, hallelujah! We thank you, Jehovah Lord. Jesus. I worship you. 
worship you. I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name because of your faithfulness and your goodness this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your visitation in this place this morning, O oh God. And that's why we declare that that is who you are, O oh God. The Bible says that in you we live and move and have our being, O oh God. And so we thank you because without you, Jehovah God, we are not there. We cannot be there, O oh God. And so we lift up our voices, O oh God, this morning as we declare that that is who you are this morning. One more time, let's just sing it, that that is who he is. Just lift up your voices before him. Just worship him this morning. Just worship him. He's here to minister to us this morning. He's here to reach us at the point of our needs. I know that some of us are here with heavy hearts. We are burdened with many issues of life, and we come before him. He is here. That is him. The Bible says that he is not a man that is, he should lie to us. His promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we bless your name this morning. We exalt you because there is none who can be compared to you, O God. We thank you because of your faithfulness upon our lives, O God. And so we come this morning to declare that that is who you are for us in the name of Jesus Christ, O God. May you meet us at the point of our needs, O God. We come before you, Jehovah God, with heavy hearts, O God. We declare that you are the great I am, O God, in the name of Jesus. We bless your name, O God. Be exalted and be lifted up, O Jehovah God. We worship you because you are the great I am, O God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you this morning. Blessed be your holy name, O God. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be exalted, O God. And so, Father God, as we come before you this morning, we know that some of us are here. Heavy hearts, O God. So much has happened in our lives, O oh God. But we pray that even as we stand in your presence this morning, let your glory be manifested, O oh God. Let the peace that surpasses human understanding be upon us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Blessed be your holy name, Jehovah God. 
We thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness in our lives, O oh God. We are here, Lord, because you are. We are here because you are. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We glorify you this morning. Father God, you say in your word in John 16 verse 24 that until now, we have not asked of anything in your name. You're telling us and you're commanding us and directing us, oh God, that we ask of you, Lord. That our joy shall be complete this morning. And so, Father God, even as we come before you to ask of you, we pray that, Father God, you shall manifest yourself with your joy in our hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Church, let's just lift up our voices even as we pray for our families. Just thank God for your family. There's a reason why you're in that family. God has placed you there for a purpose, for a divine purpose. We pray that, Jehovah God, may you meet us at the needs of our families, O God. We exalt your name, Jesus. We give you praise because of our families, O God. Now we know that many families are going through a difficult situation in this season. Many families cannot even pay for their families, O God. And Father, we pray that you may be able to meet your people at their point of need. As we declare John 16, 24, that Father God, until now we have not asked of you. Father, we ask of you this morning that Father God, may you manifest yourself in the lives of your people in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you even for the children, even as they've gone back to school. We want to speak your grace upon them, O oh God. We speak protection upon the children, O oh God. We cover them with the blood of Jesus this morning, O oh God. That, Father God, we refuse every form of child abuse in the mighty name of Jesus. May you cover the children with the blood of Jesus through this time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. We pray for parents here, Lord, who are struggling, Lord, to provide school fees for their children. My God, we pray that you shall supply all our needs, O oh God. And Father God, we declare and release that blessing upon these people, Father God, who are struggling, O oh God. May you provide for them in the name of Jesus. We bless your name and we glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, we continue to praise your name. Church, we continue to pray even for this nation at this particular point in time. There's so much that has happened, Lord, in this country. We've lost our uh, third president. And so, Father God, we know that this country is still in a season of mourning, the loss of our third president. We just want to pray that, Father God, may you comfort the hearts of your people in this season in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Jehovah God, we want to thank you, Lord, even for the successful burial, O oh God, in Otaya yesterday. We thank you, Lord, for the peaceful burial that happened, O oh God. We do not take it for granted. Father, we continue to pray for this country, Lord, even as it's prepared for um, the general election in the month of August. We want to pray that, Jehovah God, your people shall come before you and pray that, God, you are going to direct them into the right leadership in this transition period in Jesus' name. How we pray that, Father God, we are going to elect leaders who are God-fearing, leaders who will seek after your face, and wisdom in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we speak peace upon the election that is upcoming in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your name and we glorify you this morning. Even as we continue, let's continue to pray for the county of Makueni this morning. We repent of the bloodshed and ask God to heal that land. Just lift up your voices and just speak a blessing upon the county of Makueni this morning. Jehovah God, we bless your name because of Makweni County. We pray against witchcraft and sorcery in the name of Jesus. We bring every stronghold, oh God, that is against your will this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray against hopelessness and despair in the lives of people in Makweni this morning. We declare victory over that land of God in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for the grace on ministers of the word of God. In the county of Makwen, how we pray that Jehovah God, there shall be a people who seek after you 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, O King of kings and Lord of lords. You deserve to be praised, O God. Father, we thank you, Lord, because we know that, Father God, you healing the county of Makweni this morning in the name of Jesus. Blessed are you, O King of kings and Lord of lords. Be exalted and be lifted up because we ask all this, believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just leave, give a shout of praise to the Lord this morning. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's also appreciate our worship team for the amazing worship that they've given unto us this morning. Let's appreciate them until they sit down. Buana Sifiwe. Buana Sifiwe. Let's wave in the air if you can see me or you can hear me wherever you are. It's good to see you in the house of God. Turn to your neighbor and just tell them, Welcome to the house of God this morning, and a happy Labor Day. It's good to see you. My name is Ken Odiambo. I'm born again this morning, and I'm glad to, to be our service leader this morning. And I want to appreciate the pastoral team for giving me an opportunity just to lead one more time. Amen? Amen? Okay, I want to welcome us, if there's anyone who is visiting us, First of all, welcome to this service. Today is Labor Day. Uh, I know that. Yeah. So we celebrate Labor Day. Labor Day ni siku ya wafanyikazi. Bwana Sifesan. Yes. Ni siku ya wafanyikazi. Faith, ni siku ya wafanyikazi. That's why we are here. It's good to see you. Yeah. Yes. So we, we thank God for that. So if you're visiting us for the first time, you're here and you're a visitor. This is your first time to be in this church we welcome you. We are a church that loves visitors. And um, yeah. Iko mgeni? Okay. Seems like they don't have anyone visiting us for the first time. We want to take this opportunity also to just welcome the online viewers. You are welcome to, to this service physically. Uh, you can be able to just come. We still have a space for you to be able to fellowship with us. So thank you so much for, for tuning in. I want to take this opportunity just to give anyone an opportunity who has a, a thanksgiving. You, you have something that you feel like you need to thank God for. God has been good to you and yes, yes. So just come in front, come in front and be able to, I can give two or three uh, opportunities um, one will be for Elder Shadrach, of course, just, <laughs> okay. Good morning, church. Good morning once again, and praise God. Uh, I'm grateful to God this morning. I'm so thankful. Uh, yesterday, I had uh, an incident as I was coming to church, and uh, it's just by the grace of God because uh, the worst could have happened. So as I was driving and I, I turned off to join this road towards here, as I was going uphill, I noticed there was a, a car way behind me. And so by the time I was uh, off the hill uh, at the shops, I realized that uh, they had already caught up with me. And the question was, this is a rough road. How come they are so fast and they are already uh, right behind me? So the suspicion was already there. But I give thanks uh, to God for that discernment. So as the, we, we, I just proceeded. And so they, they honked at me, uh, just a sign that uh, I needed to give them way because, you know, they are in a hurry. And so um, I gave them way. And so they lowered their window and said, Habariyako. So I said, Mzuri sana. So they said, Uneza kagari kando. So the other question that came into my mind is, Kando wapi? The, this Barabara doesn't have Kando. I think it should be like Uneza uh, Simama. So um, I said, I asked them why. They said, uh, It's a police search. Then I looked at them, and uh, of course, the, the, the car they were driving 
it was a pro box. So that's uh, an eyebrow. Again, uh, I questioned. So I said, I can't stop here. So they say, you have to stop. So I blocked them and they uh, proceeded to drive towards this place. Uh, I did not increase the speed. Uh, I, didn't want to, uh, I did not want them to suspect that I, I knew they were that. So um, by the time I was getting here, I started honking so that uh, the Askari could open the gate for me. Luckily, he did, and it was fast. Uh, and then they pulled uh, behind me, and uh, two men came out of the car, and they followed. By that time, I had parked. And so they, they, I, from later, I heard that they asked the Askari, who is this guy here? Because we asked him to stop, and he, he declined. So um, they came towards me. Uh, by then, I had gotten out of the car, and they locked it. Uh, they asked me why I did not stop. And so both day I told them, there is no way I could have stopped there because uh, first of all, you did not identify yourselves. And so one, one guy pulled uh, an identification card because it was uh, um, police from Kenya police service. But I could tell either he was fake or he was a police officer. But the three other guys who were left in the car, I, I don't think they were policemen. And so um, th this is quite a testimony that the worst could have happened. I don't know what could have happened, but I'm here giving a testimony that God uh, protected me. Yes, as Isaiah 54, 17 says, uh, there is no weapon forged against me that pros will prosper. Yes, I had the ordeal, but it did not prosper. Amen? We praise God for that. So as you drive, I, I think it's also important that uh, uh, sometimes we tend to move the car. Use your side mirrors. Use the driving mirrors. Let the spirit of God guide you. Uh, question and uh, watch out for those who are behind you and what, whatever is happening in your environment. Lock the doors. I, I'm, I can assure you I had not locked the door. I, it's usually I don't lock the doors. But when I realized these are thugs, I just locked the door as I was driving. And I got here safely, I think, because they realized there were other people here. Uh, their, their plan cropped. And so uh, they turned back the car and they left. They did not search the car. And actually, I asked this guy, uh, now you are free to search the car. And they did not search the car. So I think um, it's a carjacking uh, incident that cropped. And I glorify God for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate God for his doing. Let me welcome Elder Patel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, it's great to be back in church again after a while. Um, thank God for his mercies and grace upon us as a family. Um, We lost our brother, my brother, and uh, he was quite very close to us. Uh, he'd been uh, unwell for the last two and a half years, and we are here to thank God for um, the victory he has given us, and secondly, to appreciate each one of you who has stood with us over that time as a family, we received overwhelming support from the church um, by your prayers, your presence. Um, some and a number of you came to condole with us in my home here. A number came to the morgue as we were leaving on Thursday. A number accompanied us to the burial. Uh, many of you gave and you supported us in many ways. We thank you totally from the depth of our hearts. Um, and the pastorate as well, who, who have supported us in such strong and great ways, we thank God. And I think I'm not just speaking for myself alone. I think a number of us have been bereaved lately here in this church. And you have continued to stand with many of us who are bereaved. And God bless you. I just want to read one verse for you because God's word is powerful. From the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. It says that 
For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love, which you have showed towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. God is not unjust that he will forget your work, your labor of love that you have shown to each one of us. We know many of us are believed, so when one is believed or two are believed, we know some go this way, other go that way, others go like this. And so God will not forget he has seen. And uh, I remember our family as we were concluding the burial said that everyone who has stood with us, and as a church, I say everyone who has stood with every member of the church during this hard time, may the Lord who sees what is done in secret reward you in public. Thank you and God bless you. Um, I know I've been away for two weeks because I was bereaved and we were just standing with my brother's family. But again, uh, God willing, this week I traveled to Nigeria for work for two weeks. And so I'll probably miss you big. But do you send me with greetings to Nigeria? Amen. Amen. I hope when I come back, I come with a Nigerian accent. Or <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Elder Kakui, for that. We continue to pray for God's grace upon um, your family and Anyone else who had gone through a bereavement, we pray that the peace of God that surpasses human understanding shall be upon you and your entire family in Jesus' name. At this particular point in time, okay, we have one more burning one. Let's appreciate her. Buenas if you were. Buenas if you were. Na mimi ni kona shukurani. Monday ni litoka kazi vizuri. Na ni kacha ni mefunga kazi yangu vizuri. Asubuhi ya Tuesday nikiamkia kazi nikakuja nikakuta wezi walijaribu kukata mabati na wakajaribu kungonga mpaka nini ceiling so ikambaki shimo pale na nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu hiyo siku hakukunyesha but i thank god kwa sababu hata venye walivunja na wakajaribu kutoboa mpaka shimo Mungu aliwasaidia hawakuweza kuingia so i thank god for that is a miracle so, may God bless you and continue playing. Thank you so much, ma'am, for, for that powerful testimony. Amen. Um, let me welcome the media highlights at this particular point in time. Nairobi Baptist Church on Gatarongai welcomes you to this wonderful worshiping community that advances the kingdom of God through the Holy Spirit. Today's church announcements are as follows. Today is our gift Sunday, so let us give cheerfully. Next Sunday, the 8th of May, will be our Holy Communion service, so let us prepare prayerfully. The church invites young adults, youth, children for baptism classes. The classes start after the main service, while the children classes will be during the school Sunday service. The Seekers program is beginning from 10th of May to 11th of June. All who finish their Form 4 are welcome every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 p.m. until 5 p.m. We continue with our Friday prayer meetings every Friday from 7 p.m. During the month of May, the growth group will be leading the prayers focusing around Pentecost theme. Let us join and call on to the Lord together. Tumaini Women's Ministry will be having their monthly meeting on Saturday, the 21st of May. The Men of Valor, the Men's Ministry, will be having their morning fellowship on Saturday, the 14th of May. 
all are welcome. MBC Ongatarongai is to raise 1 million Kenya shillings towards the mission kitty. 60% of the collection will be used on development activities, while 40% will be used on missions. Come and be part of this noble initiative. Send your contributions to pay bill number 498458 account grow and go rongai. Let us give generously. Develop your spiritual knowledge of God by reading the Bible. The Bible reading marathon this week is from Acts chapter 7 to chapter 28, then on to Romans chapter 1 to chapter 4. For any inquiries, contact Ongatarongai on telephone number 700 or you can send us an email on rongai at narubibaptist.co.ke You can also follow us on our social media platforms. Thank you for joining us today. Do have a blessed week. Media team, let's appreciate the media team for the work they're doing. I have information that the children have a presentation, so I want to welcome the teachers in charge. Appreciate her as she comes. Thank you very much. Hello, church. I think we'll make this a habit every two weeks or fortnight. So we have a group. Eh? We formed a group. They're called the Wings of Peace. A book I'm wasn't let down easy. Wings of Peace. I'm going to coffee. They have the courage to come and sing for us. So we are from the Sunday School, Tunajita, the Wings of Peace, I think in the theme of grow and go. They believe that Tunanza kwa Sunday School, Tuki grow, Tunakuja mpaka main church. We see growth. And unajua tuko month of May. Ah, oh, may actualize your, your, your vision. Sa nyu engine sijum ko api. This is a challenge. They have actually grown and they have gone to the, the big church. So we're going to sing a song. I think we'll just do two songs. The first one is from the book of Acts, chapter 3. You can open your books and you can sing with us.
ladies and gentlemen, in front of you are the wings of Prince, ready to present a song. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, what a glory He shares on our way. While we do His goodwill, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. coffee for the courage of coming in front and singing for you thank you so much uh, send the school thank you for that we want to ask them to rise up on their feet even as we release them to go to their classes watoto bwana sifiwe aya tusimame 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 i'll ask lydia to come and pray for you she loves children she has passion for young people and she has children also. So Lydia Serea, just welcome and just, just pray for them even as they go to. Let's appreciate Lydia. This is Lydia Serea. She's a good friend. Yeah. Okay, let's believe and pray. Our dear God, we thank you for these children. We thank you even for their teachers. As they proceed to their classes, we pray that uh, they will be guided by their teachers well. They will grow. And we pray even for the parents as they guide them, they will guide them in the way of the Lord. So we thank you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All the children say. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Twende pole pole. Don't run. Don't run. We want to go through the giving session now. We want to welcome worship team to come up on stage even as we do. Today is a gift Sunday. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor today is gift Sunday. So gift Sunday means that you have to give your tithes and your fast fruits and anything that you want to give to the Lord even as the month begins. So we have three ways of giving. You can bring your cash to the boxes in front here. We can use the PDQ machine at the back after the service, or you can give through the pay bill number that is given there, 498-458. May the Lord bless us even as we give.
sana kuna yemungu uweza wa yote alingia roho ni mwangu kanipa utulia kanambia ewe mwana usili Thank you for the giving of your people this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the gift uh, of workmanship that you've given unto us, that we are able to create wealth. And so even as we give a part of it to you, we pray that it's going to be used for the expansion of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every hand that has given to God, even those who are not able to. We pray that, Jehovah God, may you continue to minister to them in your own divine ways, O God, for the glory and honor of your name. We bless you, Lord, and we glorify you. Because you ask all this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Buona Sifiwe. Thank you so much for being attentive and just continue to listen even as we continue with our service. It's good to see Mwishimiwa, Jijo, Salimia, Wanainchi. Just wave at them. Yes, yes, yes. We acknowledge your presence in this church. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. At this particular point in time, we want to go into the reading of the word, and uh, we are reading from the book of Luke 22, 39 to 46. Let me welcome my dear wife to just come and help us read. I appreciate her. She comes. She's paka afike apa dio asianguke. Thank you so much. Good morning, church. Praise God. 
Are we there yet? Luke chapter 22, verse 39 to 46. It's about Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. And I'll read. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in, an, in anguish, he prayed earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, the speaker of the word today is uh, a man I've known for quite some time. He's a good man. He's a family man. He's passionate about uh, ministry and the work that he does. Um, yeah, he's a life member of a team called Arsenal. So we celebrate him. Um, even though they don't win anything, but we continue to celebrate with them for their efforts that they're making so far, especially in this season. Um, he's a friend of mine, a family friend, a colleague. We work together, and uh, he's none other than our own brother, Emmanuel Okonda. Just appreciate him even as he comes to share with us this morning. Yes, let's just stretch up our hands even as we pray for him. Father, we thank you for Brother Emmanuel even as he brings your word to us. We pray that Jehovah God, the word that is bring forth is going to be fruitful in his life and our lives for the glory and honor of your name. We bless you and we glorify your name. May you give him the utterance that he need even as you speak your word to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you so much, Ken. Um, it's only that you are my boss, but I would have said a few things also. <laughs> and June is our appraisal month, so I'm one month away from appraisals. Let me just say I'm born again. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Buana Yesu Um Yeah, COVID is over. Uh, mm, yes, it's over in the speech of... Uh, the bishop who preached yesterday at a funeral in Odaya, he said, uh, um, COVID may be behind us, but we should sanitize our mouth. And so in that spirit of COVID is over, we can extend a hand to your neighbor. Feel free to extend a hand to your neighbor. Yeah, good. Feel free. Yes, feel free. Oh, kuna yonyuana goteana bado. Ah, amen. Haina shida. So um, this morning I'm born again. I love the Lord as my personal savior. It's a testimony I have carried through um, from May, no, from April 29th, just two days ago, right? 29th was two days ago or one day ago? Uh, Caro, I trust you. How many days? <laughs> two days. Yeah, with Caro, everything is right. So Caro tells me. Two days ago was on 29th, so I gave my life two days ago to the Lord. That was 2005 on 29th of April. Hallelujah. The Lord has been faithful through this journey. I was a form one by then. Now I am a family man. Nipigieni makofi. Ukiyokoko kiuwa form one na uwe. Sini mzuri sana. And uh, the Lord has um, been with me, and just thank you so much, uh, Ken, for introducing me. Yes, I love Arsenal, and we are doing very, very well, unlike some of my friends who are close to me, uh, who are actually doing badly. <laughs> I may not mention their name because they have a Thanksgiving today, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been away also in church uh, for the last one month, and I'm with my wife. She's a, um, a family lady, so she's taking care of my um, um, half quiver uh, because it's not yet full so I thank God for her receive her greetings even as she is um, outside there um, I've been in ministry all through 
I went to preach at um, a place called Mageta Island. Um, it's when um, you repent when you're on this side of the island before you enter the water. And then you repent also before you go through the water because there's no other means. There's no even a place where an helicopter can land because it's a small land, but an island. And the Lord was faithful that time. A total of 89 souls gave their life to Jesus Christ. And we thank God for that. Then I proceeded for another ministry in the village where I was there for a weekend, preached there. And then I also went to Kayole. And last Sunday, I was at a church where my wife works, AIC, and they send greetings to us. Have we received them? Amen, amen. So the song that uh, the present worship sang, Bila Yesu, Mimi Nikitubu. And thank God, while I was away, um, some new things happened here. This is really nice. This is really nice to have this in our church this time. Um, so, Jijo, while you're away, this thing came up here. And uh, now that you're here, find something else to buy for the church. <laughs> in the spirit of coming back with a third. <laughs> Amen. So, Jackie had texted Jackie because there's a song that is in line with my sermon. So that she can take a few minutes uh, with me on the pulpit and uh, Dr. Tari. Yeah, probably the present worship because it's a nice song. Uh, if you don't mind, you can worship with us in that song. Get Semani, Yesu Aliomba. It's a good song. It's a good song. Sorry, I didn't. No, I texted, G, um, I texted, I texted Joe yesterday. But Joe, uh, I think up to this morning, had a summer message yangu. So Jackie read, Asante Nisan. We can worship together in this song, even as we prepare to hear the gospel of the Lord this morning. And 
So that is the prayer and the learning this morning that he who sees in the secrecy and in line with the verse that our elder read to us that God is not a just, he will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. In line of Jesus himself offering out loud cries from, um, from Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. All these points as to one thing that we should pray. And now this May, we are introducing to uh, Elder Kaku, if you'd find for me, um, please, Hebrews 5.7 is another text I will give reference to. Um, we are introducing um, a new series this month, Grow in Prayer. And uh, we all know, thank you so much, uh, let's give a clap to our elder before he flies to Nigeria. We love you. No, mine is bad, really bad. <laughs> we need to get your uh, accent when you come. Scripture exhorts us to pray without ceasing, captured in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. When we look through the Bible, we see that those who walk closely with the Lord adopted prayer as part of their lifestyle. And here, as a chance for us to grow in our walk with the Lord, Prayer must be an integral part of our lives. Why? Because prayer will enable us to grow closer to God. It will enable us to hear from Him. Prayer will enable us to know His will. And prayer will provide a place where we can release our thoughts, our feelings, and emotions to the Lord as we await on Him to move. Praise the Lord. Exactly what we are doing this month is what Jesus is doing in this text. By the way, how is the marathon taking you? Did you come across this portion of scripture when you are running the marathon? Did you realize that this portion of scripture appears in the old gospels? The only thing is different in wordings. And when Ken was calling people to give a thanksgiving, I... One also to give a thanksgiving. It has been my desire to go to a Bible school ever, ever since I graduated in 2014. And so I've been trusting God for an opportunity to do a master's and biblical studies as uh, my mentor here and friend has been always. I remember um, a few weeks ago, I wanted to do another course. Um, I even forgot the topic, Elda. Um, was it something in women ministry? <laughs> I actually applied to do a course in women's ministry. And so when I told him as my friend, he said, why should you go to? There's no, like, like that one is specifically for, specified for the ladies and all that. And so I went back to, on my knees and trusted God for an opportunity. So this morning, my family and I are grateful because on Thursday, just after we came from the burial of Kakui's brother, I came home and received an email from Lancaster Bible College that had been accepted in the school. And so I begin my classes this month on 11th. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is just in my pursuit for me to get to know the Lord so well. And that means that's an answered prayer. Trusting God for something and it comes through for you. Hallelujah. It is not a one thing, a one time. It is not that I just went and told God I need this. Actually, to be very truthful here, this is the second time I was giving a try to that school. I applied last year and I received a regret. And I did not stop there. I trusted God for this opportunity again. And two years down the line, I received a congratulations. When we persist in prayer, when we seek the Lord, when we petition this God, He hears our prayers. And he answers them. Praise the Lord. Luke is introducing here something of persistency in the life of Jesus Christ. I will go straight to verse 39. I will do a kind of expository here. I will go to verse 39 where the Bible says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. I will take us back because we all are still fresh in reading the book of Luke. I know today we are doing Acts 7, 8, and 9. 
I know yesterday we, were, we, we finished by looking at Stephen when he had begun uh, uh, saying some truths and he was beginning to get some opposition. And chapter 7 is introducing us to him giving a long speech that leads him to receiving a thorough beating and sent to heaven direct through stones. You will read that when you get there. So here, Jesus, I am picking this, the word usual, as a habit that he had. In Luke chapter 21, verse 37, the same Luke explains by saying this. Each day, Jesus was teaching at the temple, and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount Olives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What are we getting from verse 39 about the prayer life of Jesus? That it was a rhythm of the life of him in the temple. That every evening he could find place on Mount Olives to pray. And that's what we are picking from him from that verse. That it should be a rhythm for us to seek God through prayer. It should be something in us. Burning like when you are a missionary. Jeremiah 20 verse 9 says, the word of God is burning in your bones. In fact, Jeremiah says, I cannot keep it in. I have to let it out. Praise the Lord. In the same desire here, Luke is introducing the rhythm of Jesus' life. After preaching, every evening, he would find time in a solace place and seek the Lord. After us introducing the rhythm of Jesus in this verse, there are people called disciples who are closely following what Jesus is doing. And look, in the same verse it says, part B, and his disciples followed him. Praise the Lord. Sometimes he invited them in, like in this season, in this session here, he went out. And in, when, you, when you read in Matthew, I just didn't open it. When you read from Matthew 26, 36, 56, he said he used to pick a number of disciples, three of them, and he goes with them. Because he was teaching them that these things are not just... And remember, he was God. We'll look at that when we get to Philippians chapter 2. He was God. But in his human nature on earth, he still offered himself to submit to God. The Father. Praise the Lord. And the disciples are following him closely. Even when he is going to pray. Even when the time humanity was showing in himself. Even when he faced temptations and he felt deep anguish and turmoil. The disciples were there with him. Actually, from what um, uh, Ken's wife read, he, say, he, he read and said, he moved a stone throw beyond them. That means every prayer he was making, every prayer that Jesus was making, the disciples could hear. The only difference in this text, yes, they could hear, but at some point they fell asleep. In verse 40, the Bible says, On reaching the place of them, pray that you will not fall into temptations. Now here Jesus gives his disciples the same advice that he himself knows he will need it. Pray that you will not fall into temptations. And he says this, at that hour, Jesus was expecting that those who were close to him, those who he used to go with in the solace place of prayer, one of them, was going to betray him. And he is actually feeling that at that time. And so he is telling the disciples, pray that you will not fall into temptation. There is a key thing here. Jesus is not asking them to pray that they will not be tempted. He is asking them to pray that when the temptations come, they will not fall into them. Praise the Lord. Today, we are looking at a topic, fervent, submissive prayer. A prayer that we submit to our God. Because the only way 
we as Christians, the only way we can be acceptable on his throne or the only way we can approach the throne of grace, there is only one way, through prayer. And not just prayer, prayer through submission. Praise the Lord. A prayer of reverence. When we look at verse 41, Jesus withdrew about a stone throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed. Now, Matthew and Mark, as we are reading, doesn't mention just a, a, a stone throw away and prayed. He withdrew himself. He talks, Matthew gives three people who accompanies Jesus to that place. That is Peter, James, and John. Now, when Jesus pulls out to pray, the disciples could hear what he was praying, though a temptation of sleep befell them. But even if the temptation befell them, Jesus did not fall into the temptation of sleep because he knew that hour he needed the Father more than anything else. Actually, the Bible says, and I don't know how uh, Chungaji, uh, Reverend Kakui will explain maybe sometimes later, I don't know how the Jews used to worship the Lord. I don't know how they used to pray. But here the Bible specifically notes, Jesus knelt down and prayed. When I was reading this verse about Jesus kneeling down and prayed, I remembered in 2010 when I was trusting God to go to the university. I could wake up in the morning and by then I was teaching a school in the village. I could remember when I was on the road, I could utter prayers to this God every time. Even kwa sauti. Nikikutana mtu, hata na mnaanza tu hivyo. Ama naimbio imbo ya galila ya yesu walitembea. Jui ya maji, kwa wezo wa nani. Because I didn't, know the, I didn't want the person to know that I'm praying. Akishani Peter, and sometimes I do that. When I'm taking a walk, I actually begin to pray. Because that's the time when at some point in 20, for 2013, and I made it a habit. I went to, there's a prayer center in Kiambu. I kind of forgot its name. Um, yes, there's a prayer center in Kiambu. So I went there to pray. We used to pray myself, another lady called Gladwin, Brenda, and Evans. Um, and we used to, we were trusting God for our spouses. So we used to go to the mountain to trust God for our spouses. Who you married? Married I know that. We used to go up the mountain and fast from Friday to Sunday without a list. Without a list. And we could pray that Father, at your own time, at your own, when it wills, give me a wife at some point. And we quote Genesis 24, that when the time was ready for Isaac to get a wife, even his father knew that time is ready for my son. And he had to call his servant and say, Ikijana imetosha ibuenda. Even the father knew. And you still go, when my time comes, even you yourself, you will know. And when we were in that prayer, in that mountain in Kiambu, I met a, um, a brother. I have never met him, and I don't know his name. And I asked him, so why are you here? Because it was the third day. Now, who called you drive fast? There is no phone, yeah, internet, there is nothing. It's water, warm water. And so there is no coming back, because if you come back, you'll actually... Um, as in the Okwaget, Mbaka Osemi, you write, I'm coming here for three days, and they keep you accountable that you'll be here for how many days? <laughs> Even if you feel like going back, at the gate, you know, you'll be told, go and pray. So I pray in Kiambu. So I met a brother there, and he told me I have been there for a week. So I asked him, why are you praying? The brother told me that I am presenting my family to God this week. Because if I don't do it, who will do it for me? Praise the Lord. I took that habit. When Ken said, here we pray for family, I mentioned my people to the Lord. Because if I don't do that, who will do it for me? It should be a habit in our lives. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now here, Jesus kneels down and he prays. And he's, in his prayer, Jesus is specific in verse 42. He says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, 
but you must be done. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, I have mentioned in Luke 2, the Bible says he was God. But he forfeited that, came here on earth, and at this hour, the most difficult and anguished time is coming to him. In his human nature, Jesus feels the pain that is described in Isaiah 53. When they talk about the suffering servant. I think Pastor Kakui preached about suffering servant sometimes last day uh, in 2020. About suffering servant. Now in that time, Jesus is reminded in his heart that yes, I may be going through this moment. Actually, the will of Jesus was that he kama inakupendeza kaonoe kikombe hichi. Hicho ni kiswahili. Kikombe hichi. You are doubting my swahili. And look at this. He says this. Yet not my will. But you must be done. Remember he's the son of God. Isaiah calls him the prince of peace. Almighty God. Everlasting Father. Emmanuel. Those are the names given to this one here. Who is saying now in his most time that he needs the Lord. Leave alone Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? It begins here when he feels that daddy, I feel like I'm alone. And if it pleases you, please get this cup out of me. One thing I learned about this verse 42, actually there are four and I will discuss them. Jesus is addressing God as the Father. As, as we learn through a fervent prayer of submission, the one thing I desire us to learn is who to address this prayer to. Praise the Lord. And as you address this prayer to the Father, there are some things that we need to know and be confident about, about this Father. I love my son. Every evening when I get home, even if he was asleep, and the door opens in a way that he will wake up and he sees my face. There's one thing that comes out from his mouth. Daddy, welcome back. And I always feel sometimes that I should be hugging the mother first before my son. In the order of love. I should be hugging the mother first before my... But I fail because the love he nakuja kwa mlango two other before fikia ingine kwa hapa next. And that tells me I am who? A father. And when my son says, Daddy, you are back, there is always a second question. Daddy, what have you brought me? So every evening, there's a Ngong Heights, uh, uh, Ngong Heights uh, a supermarket. I learned how to foliza, by the way, um, Elder Kakui. One time I went to the supermarket and I thought I had m -Pesa. So, when I went and I uh, had taken some juice and some chocolate, of course, three of them, because I have poke chocolate and then my other two people. So, when I was paying, it asked me, uh, and, uh, you have insufficient? <laughs> Would you like to pro to, uh, for Lisa? And I, if you click one, you say, yes. And I went and said, and said, yes. And so, I paid. I said, what for Lisa? I'm for a young guy's story. That's how you get out of these things. Remember, because of one thing, when I get home, I have somebody who will ask me, Daddy, what have you brought me? Now here, Jesus is addressing God as the Father. And as he calls him Father, he is very sure that this is my Father. I am confident in him. He will answer when I call him. He will respond when I go to him because he has done it before. He has helped me multiply fish. When I asked him to heal Simon's mother-in-law, when there was a man, oh no, you can act. When there was a man who was at the pool for 38 years, akaitwa, akafanya nini? There is that confidence that Jesus had. But even if he had that confidence in this father, 
He calls him father, yes, but remember he has said, not my will, but by your what? Your will. I will, take, I, will, I will also take us to Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, which says, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petition with fervent crisis, cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was hard because of his reverent submission. During his time on earth, and here the disciples have a privilege of observing Jesus at his time of intense pressure. But even if the situation Jesus, the Son of God, who is the King of Kings, is in, he still remembers that God is his Father. Now, if, when we compare Jesus calling God um, Father in Luke chapter 22, in here, Hebrews chapter 5, he says this, He offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. The one who could save him from death is the one being addressed here by Jesus. Now look here. Jesus is pointing out the abilities of God. That God is a faithful God. That God, when I pray in his will, he will hear me and he will answer me. That this God, when I have faith in him, whatever I ask for will be answered. When Ken was praying, he quoted John 16, 24. That until now, we have not asked for anything in his name. The assurance Jesus gives in part B of that verse is, ask now and your joy will be complete. Praise the Lord. Friends, I'm calling us to this verse 42. That when we pray, when we address God as the Father, when we know that this God has power, when we know that this God loves us, when we go that this God fulfills his promises, someone sang in the worship song, promise keeper, light where? He is our God. When we acknowledge him as that, regardless of the response to our prayer, we will still have faith in him. Praise the Lord. Regardless of the response to our prayer, the ultimate thing is when we call him our father, and we submit ourselves to him. Whether he says no, yes, or wait. The one thing that is common. Our faith is still in him. Praise the Lord. Elder Kakui, when he was mentioning about his brother who passed on. I remember. And I know that you wished your brother to live longer. And you actually petitioned God for his life. I can bet that one of the verses you used to pray, and I don't know if this is true, is you will not die until you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of? But he still went to be with the Lord. And our faith is still strong in this God. Irregardless of the response, irregardless of the answer he gives you, please let your faith be anchored on him. Praise the Lord. Number two. Number one was addressing God. A fervent prayer of submission. When we address him as father, he will always hear us. What is the condition of your prayer? Jesus says, if you are willing, if you are willing, take this cup out of me. Actually, the Bible says, and it's recorded in Matthew, Luke only points one time. Matthew is pointing out that Jesus went prayed, came back. If you are willing, went, prayed, come back. If you went, and every time he went, he prayed that prayer. Every time he came, those who had followed him were asleep. I remember there's a Kesha we came here by this Nafazi Rudi. Kuna Kesha tulikuja hapa, usiku. And uh, sister, I forgot her name, she was leading here. A very nice worship song. Ilikuwa niyo masaya saatisa hivi. Actually, uh, Pastor Cody had just preached. So, tukazema pia tusumame tuendele na mao. 
na maombi. And uh, so there are different types of prayers. There are people who pray while standing, hallelujah, to pigei makoso usiku. Kuna those who pray where they are see, seated. And then there's there are us who we choose a place to sleep flat on the ground crying to the Lord. You know wezi kuja kuamsha mtu akiwa flat. I'm reverence before the Lord. But the truth is I was really really sleeping that time. Kwa ground tu. Hakuna mtu realize by the way. No one realize. Aliona huyu Emmanuel amezama kwa mao. Mimi hapo nilikuwa na kula tu usingizi mtamu hapo. At that time. Anyway, Jesus here, every time he went to pray and came back, Emmanuel's were there. What were they doing? Any other Emmanuel's here? Come on. Mchungaji hata chukwati nini? Jina yako andike kwa black book ya kanisa. Just confess. But yes, a ministers, we can get tired in this prayer. You can actually be praying, praying, and nothing is happening. And actually you fall into a sleep. But here I'm calling us to one thing. The condition we put in the prayer. Only if Jesus' prayer can be answered within the scope of his father's intention, does he want it answered. This is what it means. That the desire of the father must take preeminence to my desire. Hallelujah. I wanted a car in 2016. When I was in Masabit, the desire of the father was not I have that a car that time. Mungu amengoja tu nikishawa watu pap. Yanapea nini? Kumbe hiyo gari ingekuwa napiga nao maraundi nyafai nipige nao maraundi. Na ku brag around with that car. Na kufungua someone was, we were learning in our Bible study in the village in, in Gong that pride when you are in the village and I've done this several times until that time. When you're in the village with your car you lower the window and unaweka mkono hapo. Na ikiwezekana unaacha na hivi dole viwili. You knew that? I used to do that in the, at least I learned you ni pride that in the village. Unaonyesha watu uko na nini? Uko na gari. But if we could direct our prayers to this God and accept that not our will but his will, then we are safe. Now how do we petition God? Number three. And just one more and then we close. Number one was we call him father. Number two is the condition in our prayer should be him, his will. If he is willing. Tuko pamoja. If he is, there are times you can be willing. Us, I know. But here, the call is if God, you are willing, please spare this one for me. Not my will, but your will. The number three is petition. And the petition here is just one. Please take this cup from me. I know in Isaiah 53 Jesus is called the suffering servant and he had come to know that I am the fulfillment of that verse. Actually Isaiah 61 is what Jesus quotes in Luke chapter 4 when he says this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing that I was sent to set the captives free. And Isaiah 53 says he is he has taken away our infirmities, our diseases, as in all the dirty things that we would be accused of. Jesus had carried. So here actually what is happening in this verse of Jesus prayer he has come to the realization that the sins of mankind let us name them sins of mankind taja tu kwa sauti tuseme aina ya dhambi Ken amesema last ya macho Usia tukisema itakuwa yako hapana just say it No that when you say it will be pegged on you kumbe huyu anakuanga na hapana just say any type of sin Yes envy yes uh -huh. yes abuse uh -huh. lies of the tongue Keep going kama mchungaji ameshafunguka ni amesema let's go on Corruption yes this is a true Kenyan eh uh -huh. True Kenyan. Now, yes? Lies. Yes, someone I'm too had mentioned to us here. Now, this is what this verse. Please take this cup from me. Jesus has come to realize that these are the things pegged on him. Greed, lust, sexual sin, lies, envy. All of them. Anabebe? 
anabebeshwa. And they are heavy. You remember when Jesus Christ, when uh, Lazarus had died? The grief he had? You remember, I teach Siari. And Luke chapter 2 has been, it's just the whole of paper 2 of Siari. For those who have children in form 2, I can teach them Siari. Luke chapter 2 is the whole of paper 2 in Siari. When Jesus has a triumphant entry in Jerusalem, one of the things that is notable, he cried. Why did he cry? I need to know your results in CRE in your high schools. Why did Jesus cry when he entered Jerusalem? Because he knew that that is the place all the sins of the world in his triumphant entry. He knew he was actually grieving for the sins of the city and that he will carry them on his own. So he is saying this, Lord, take this cup from me at Mount Olives. Because he can easily feel that a few hours later, I am going to be accused of these sins. I am going to be beaten of these sins. And so he's asking the father, if it takes you by goodness, please take this cup out of me. Now what we learn from here in our prayer, our fervent prayer, be direct to God what you want. It is not wrong to submit to God the desires of your heart. Actually, the, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs, um, uh, submit your plans to you know, yes? Submit your plans to the Lord. What will he do after submitting them? He will establish them. This is what means here. Jesus, in his own, he submits what he desires. That if it is possible, watch kikombe kiondolewe kutoka kwangu. In our times, let us petition God. Let us be specific with what we want from this God. It may not be his desire, but a surprise. It may be what you desire is what he desires for you. So it is good to mention them. No wonder he says that even if you have not asked for anything, the Holy Spirit will still intercede for you and you go to him in prayer. And then lastly, after we petition to God, in this chapter, we are looking at submission. Yet not my will, but you must be done. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but you must be done. This is simply a prayer of reverence, humbling and submitting himself before God and to his will. And as we read from Hebrews chapter, chapter 5 verse 7, Jesus' prayers were heard because of his reverence. He took his rightful place of submission and inferiority and bowed his heart before God. Remember we said he was God. But even if he was God, his reverence in prayer is an expression of relating to the Father from a place of submission. And for this, his prayers were heard. And when I say this, I'm reminded of a woman in the Bible. Her name is called Hannah. The Bible says Hannah was a co-wife to Penina. Both were married to her husband. Who's called who? Elkanah. Thank you for being a good teacher. We'll promote you now. Hannah and Penina were married to a husband called Elkanah. The difference between these two is that Penina was giving birth to children for who? Elkanah. And for Hannah, what does the Bible say? The Lord had shut. The Lord had closed his womb. Hallelujah. The, it is written, verse 13, I don't know, chapter 1 of 2 Samuel. The Lord had closed the womb of Hannah. Now look at this. Actually, it is written, Penina used to provoke Hannah Penina used to laugh at Hannah. The word used in the Bible is she wanted to cause or to make her feel irritated. Now, after Hannah going through this anguish and agony, after Hannah understanding that I have no place in the life of this Penina, she came to a realization that I have a place to my father who is the Lord Jesus Christ. What does Hannah do? Hannah goes in prayer. He petitions God. And she asks God for a specific thing. What did she ask? For a child. Praise the Lord. When Hannah petitions God and says, Oh God, that you may give me a son. 
when someone called Hel Eli, who was the priest of that place, came to the temple and he found that Hannah was praying, but no words were coming out, just mumbling. The mouth was moving, but no words were coming out. Eli says, you, woman, at 9 a.m. in the morning, you are already drunk. I love the response of Hannah. What does Hannah say? I am not drunk, my Lord. What have I been doing? I've been pouring out my soul to the Lord. Praise the Lord. And when this happens, I can tell you, God became specific with Hannah. And God gave Hannah a child. And the Bible says, Hannah named the child Samuel. And even when Eli, Elkanah wanted to go and offer sacrifice to the Lord, Hannah said, I am remaining behind with my son. Because I want to dedicate him to the Lord. Actually, it was a winning period. And Elkanah granted the request. When Hannah goes to Eli the priest, he says, This child, I ask him from the Lord. I am offering him to the Lord so that he will serve him for the rest of his life. When we petition God for a child, he gives us a child. When we petition God for promotion, he gives us promotion. When we petition God for healing in our lives, he brings healing in our lives. But only his desire and will. Praise the Lord. And as I said earlier, even if we ask for that promotion and it doesn't come, I will still worship him. Because no matter the response, I have faith in this Jesus. Praise the Lord. Just like my son has faith that every time I come home, I will have something in my pocket. I know, even if I don't go with it at home, he has faith in this father. It doesn't fail me as a father because I've not come with something. But instead, it increases the faith that daddy may have and daddy may also not have. And the Lord will help us. In uh, chapter 2, Hannah now burst into a song of praise. And he gives the characteristics of this God, our Father. He's the one who gives life and death. He's the one who raises the poor from poverty to richness. And Ken is an example. And no one thing he has not told you that he was raised in Mombasa. Was it a slum? I know he wants to quote it very nicely, but it was raised from a slum in Mombasa. You know a slum in Mombasa? When you look at him now, it's a true example that he trusted God for his life. He trusted God in prayer and he persisted and he prayed and he prayed. Now he doesn't even remember Mombasa where he used to stay. Because God has blessed him with big houses in Rukizarian. We go there to eat Samaki Okupaku. The idea is this, friends, as I, as I finish. When we seek out this God in prayer, when we call him our father, his will be done in our lives. When we submit to him in prayer and cry, not cry of cry, cry, no. It's a cry of deep relation with this father. A cry of, I know this God. He will surely come through for you. Now, the end of the story is, Jesus was still beaten thoroughly. <clears throat> he was still crucified. People spat on him. Even on the cross, he still made a prayer. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? But he still had faith in that same God. Praise the Lord. And today, we preach him every day. So as we begin this series of prayer, I encourage us to really honestly seek God. Lakini kuna tabia wa Kristo wengine, I've just remembered this. Kuna wengine wanamuka asubui na mapema. Asubui na mapema. I have them, I think in our place where we stay, there's someone down there. Amehamia hapo nafikiri na kanisa. 4 a.m. Sayo na enjoy uzingizi jo. Na kula uzingizi. Hameaza kuinua sa huu. Okay, si mbaya. It's not bad. But please don't be a nuisance to your neighbor when you go home. Intercessors and those who trust God. Those who pray in love. Hebrews 5, 7 has said, Jesus offered loud, loud Christ to the one who could save him. But there are those of us who wake up very 2 a.m. to petition God. 
Father, remember Ken. He has a Una shida gani? Karibu niseme shida zako hapa. And then or he begins saying, God, thank you for giving me a big cup. Thank you for you bless me with 10,000 shillings and I was able to give it. Thank you. The Bible says, and I'm taking it literally for those who are Bible scholars. I'm going to school next month, <laughs> this month. Bible scholars, the Bible says, uh, if you wake up early in the morning to bless a neighbor, <laughs> if he's not happy, it will be considered as a curse. Proverbs 27, verse 14. He who wakes up, I'm taking literal meaning. He who wakes up early in the morning to bless a neighbor without his consent, it is considered as a what? A neighbor. A uh, curse. Because when Amusha, Mzai Karicho, Metoka Karisa, who go all the way, is just enjoying a sleep in the morning. And you at four, you're already calling on the Lord. It's not bad. But you are causing someone to do what? So even as we offer our loud cries to the Lord, him who could save us from death, like Jesus did. Let us always remember, it is about him and not us. Not the volume, not the noise, not the kulala, kwamuka, kuketi, not that. Our condition of the heart, even as we petition him. Why do we need this? Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for being an example of a prayerful person withdrawing and going to a place of prayer. Thank you for your reverent submission. And thank you for the condition of your heart at that time. As much as you wanted the cup to be taken away from you, but still you desired that the will of the Father be accomplished. And I pray that, Lord, your will will be done in our lives. Therefore, we surrender to you. Take control of our lives. Allow us to submit to you in prayer. Allow us to be true in our hearts. Allow us to fervently seek you. And more importantly, allow us to grow in our prayer life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Can we thank God for his word to us today? <laughs> Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the word of God says in James chapter 5, verse 13, Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with, with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. My brothers, if anyone should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sin. And this is a very powerful sermon that has been preached here today, calling us to a life of prayer. Not only today, but every day that we need to submit ourselves to the Sovereign Lord as He guides us and as He leads us. But even before we go today, I want us to pray for ourselves. I want us to commit our prayer life before the Lord. I don't know how you've been doing in your quiet time, in your fellowship with the Lord. I just want us to call on him and ask him to strengthen us, to fuel us, to give us the strength. I don't know how, the state of your heart right now, but I just want us to submit ourselves to God because, Lord, we do not want to fall into temptation. Can you just speak that out to him? Father, I do not want to fall into, the, uh, into temptation. I do not want to be lethargic when it comes to prayer. 
Father Lord, I need you to revive me once more. I need you to strengthen me once more, oh God. I need you to teach me how to pray. Sometimes I do not know. I bubble and say things and, and, and not make sense. But Lord, I just want you to teach me how to submit myself to you. Uh, I pray, Jehovah God, that would you teach me how to totally surrender to your will, uh, to your leadership, to your sovereignty. Teach me to submit to you, Lord. Father, Lord, I pray that would you teach me to trust you, to guide me and to do things in the way that would order my life. Can we just speak that out to the Lord? And Father, Lord, this is our desire today. Our desire is to live lives that pleases you. Our desire is to grow in our intimacy with you. Father Lord, you know how some of us are struggling in our prayer lives. You know how some of us are struggling in our fellowship with you. And Lord, how I pray this time for a spirit of revival in our church in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak revival upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. May you grow in your prayer life. May you grow in your walk with the Lord. May you grow in your intimacy with the Lord. May you experience the miracles of the Lord in your prayer life. That every time you, uh, you encounter him, may you feel his move in your life. And now I want to pray that may the Lord come through for you. Whatever battle that you've been having, whatever thing that you've been trusting God for, whatever thing that you're celebrating about, May you dance and sing for joy because the Lord has heard you. And so my brothers and sisters in the Lord, I pray that may you go and worship him as we bring this service to a close. May you trust him to come through for you. And may you experience the miracles of the Lord in your life. And I want to ask that as you grow in your personal life and in your prayer life, I ask that would you allow that to overflow in this sanctuary. Allow that to overflow to the one another. Allow yourself to stand in the gap for the many. Allow yourself to stand in the gap for this church, especially in Nairobi Baptist, in the season that we are in. Allow yourself to be used of the Lord. The Lord wants to minister through you to the church. Open up your hearts that the Lord will speak to you. And pray for Nairobi Baptist Church globally. And pray for the nation in the season that we are in right now. Plead to the Lord. Hebrews 5, 7 that was read to us says that Jesus cried out loudly. He cried out, not to disturb our neighbor, but let your heart come out to the Lord and express yourself before him, desperately showing that we need him. And I want to ask us to stand as we bring the service to a close. And this is my prayer for you today. I pray out of his glorious riches that may the Lord strengthen you with his power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is his love of Christ, is the love of Christ. And to know his love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. As you step out this week, as you do what you plan to do in the course of the week, may you come to a realization of this. And now to him who is able to do immeasurable, immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him 
in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generation be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now. Amen. And now um, can we share in the words of the grace and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. I send you to go live a prayerful life and serve the Lord this week. Amen. 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 Thank you so much and God bless you. Worship him. Malamu, Malamu, Malamu. Zambe Malamu, Zambe Malamu, Zambe Malamu, Malamu, Malamu. Mungu ni muema, Mungu ni muema, Mungu ni muema, ah ni muema, ni muema. Mungu ni muema, Mungu ni muema, Mungu ni muema. Sikiza muziki wa Yesu Na msikiza mdugu yangu Dr. Joe Kupatie hiyo muziki ya bass Ah Chela, 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 chela Aya Shangwe na vigele, gele Hey Zame malamu